So we're ready to start creating our mosaic. Let me show you these pretty glass tiles. They are indeed glass, but they're molded, so there are no sharp edges. You'll see that all of them have like little ridges on the back. That is indeed the back. That helps with adhesion, that have your glue work. Plus, if this were to be on the top, when we grout, all the grout would stick in these little lines, and trust me, it looks really bad. So you wanna make sure that um, this ridge side goes down and the smooth side goes up. We're going to be working with this fabulous glue. It's my favorite. It's called Colol, and it is a water-based adhesive, so you don't have to worry about um, any toxic or any fumes or anything hurting your hands for where to get on. But the nice thing about it is it is rated for outside. So like many uh, mosaic glues, most of them cannot go outdoors. This can, so if you choose to put your mosaic outside, that's fine. I like to start with the little round things in the corners, um, just with a glob of glue. I put the glue down on the substrate, not on the little mosaic piece. So I start with those. Of course, it's random where you choose to put them. And then it's time for these wonderful glass squares. Um, people always say, well, how much glue would you use? That's about the right amount. If you have too much glue and it smushes around, you can use a Q-tip to kind of help with that. If you get glue on top of your little on your piece of glass, not to worry when we grout, that will come off. Then the question, of course, is how close? You want them right at the edge and you want them almost touching. If you set them and glue them down almost touching, they will be perfect and they will fit uh, exactly. A totally optional idea is if you have wheeled nippers to cut your little uh, glass uh, squares in half. Um, but for, just because I think it's interesting, so you could have some pieces like that. You can see in this little sample I've done that just kind of to make it more interesting. It's certainly not necessary. If you are going to cut in half with your glass nippers, always cut uh, right uh, backside up and opposite of the ridges. Hold on tightly with your left hand, I, well I'm right handed, or your not dominant hand I guess, and hold on to it. And the direction your wheel nippers are going are the direction you're going to get a cut. Perfect. Well I set all my glass tiles uh, last night, glued them down, and um, now they're all set so I don't have to worry about knocking them about, and I get to put on the letters. Uh, lots of different ways you can do it. Um, in this sample, I used a ruler and measured everything out so they were equidistant and um, even. But you know what my favorite way to do it is, actually, is to just wing it. Just eyeball it. And you know the fun thing to do with these letters is nobody says that they have to go straight across. They could go like that. They could go like that. They could go like that they could go whatever floats your boat. I think on this one that I'm making, I am going to go like that. And I'm going to glue them down first, and I am going to put them directly on the back of the little tiles of the little letters. And there we go. You'll see I have this arrow here. That's to remind you that this is up. See the hangers? I'd hate to see you um, glue your letters down upside down. So that's your top, remember, and I'm going to glue my letters down, I think, like this, and I'm not going to measure, I'm just going to kind of eyeball it. 
I laid out all my little accent pieces on a tray here and put them right side up so I could see what colors and what I've got. Every kid, of course, will, of course, will have an assortment of different colors and styles, but there's uh, little petals, lots and lots of little hearts, um, some little circles for you to play with, and that's the key word, play. Um, so this is what I've done so far, uh, totally random, made it up as I went, uh, tried to make it a little funky, kind of a... 1960s flower power thing. You can see this one's a little bit different too. There's absolutely no right or wrong here. Um, we're going to use black um, right next to it, so anything you do is really going to pop. I've got a few pieces left here, and I think I probably will play with those and um, use them up. I'm going to do something over here, I think. Can you see what I'm doing? And I've got a few little colors left, and I might even just sort of mix them up. Uh, I've got some white. Um, there's some yellow and some little bitty ones. So you can see it's real scientific what I'm doing here. Just have fun with it and make it your own. I finished uh, setting my little petal accent pieces, and I'm ready to start on the black background. And you'll see that I've sent you these little black uh ceramic petals they're on purpose because I need to fill in these very hard to fill in places on the letters so I'm going to use those the two big ones right there because it fits perfectly and another big one right here and these two little ones go into the letter E The rest of the background is going to be filled in with these wonderful uh, glass uh, pieces. These are indeed molded glass, but once again, there's no sharp edges. They have a rigidy part on the back, and once again, that goes down, and the smooth side goes up. Um, there's no right or wrong in setting these and gluing them down. You're going to probably use a little bit less glue than you did with the uh, square molded glass because they're not quite as thick. And it's just a matter of trying to piece them together as close as you can. Um, you're going to try to get them as close together as possible. But grout is your friend. And take a look at that. That's just fine. Um, so try to get as close as possible, but you're going to have some gaps and some pieces, uh, some uh, parts that are a little bit bigger than others, but it's no big deal. I wanted to show you this finished piece to show you how the grout fills in. And they're not exactly together, but try to get them as close as possible. I've included a lot of these great little um, ceramic hearts, and I like to put them in random places where... Say you have a spot where, oops, pardon me, you have a spot where you just can't find the right fit. It's kind of fun to put one of those in there. It's a nice little filler and cheater. Plus, they're they're fun. So, like I said, there's no right or wrong here. Kind of chill out with this. It might take you a while and um, enjoy the process. It's kind of meditated, I think. So, yay, I'm almost finished here. I wanted to show you kind of give you an idea of how close together the mosaic pieces are, the little black pieces. I wanted to show you, oh here, I, I like that little heart right there, um, that if you uh, are working and you happen to have wheeled nippers, you certainly don't need it because you can kind of figure out the fits, but if you get into a situation where you go, oh gosh, I just can't get the, to seem to get it to fit right, you can always try to do a little nip if that works for you. Um, but there's these uh, little black tiles come in so many different shapes that I'm pretty sure that you can find the right fit, which I just about did. But I'm just going to nip that little piece off right there to make my life easier with the wheel nippers. And I, I am done. I'm going to show you what I'm going to do right now real quick. So I'm going to turn it over upside down. I know, scary, huh? 
If I've forgotten to glue on a piece, I want to find that out now before I start grouting. I'm going to let this sit for 24 hours and then come back and grout this gorgeous beauty. So I'm going to mix the grout now for the mosaic project. I have sent you approximately uh, five ounces of black sanded grout, my favorite color. Before we get started, I'm going to ask you to take about, oh, uh, maybe a, not even quite a teaspoon of grout and put it aside in a separate cup. Keep it dry. Do not get it wet. So in mixing the grout, the, generally the ratio is uh, six to one, six ounces or six parts grout, one part water. It's really important when we mix the water with this that we do it very, very, very slowly. You don't want your grout ever to be too runny. You can't take the water out of it once you put it in there. So I have measured uh, just about one ounce of water and I've got five ounces of grout. I'm going to add it real slowly. You can see I'm using an old nasty container in a cottage cheese or sour cream container. Hate to throw away anything. And I've just added a little bit. I'm going to stir slowly. And be sure to mix from the bottom as well. Take your time. What we're going for is a consistency like mashed potatoes, um, cookie dough. Definitely not too runny. So I've added this just a little bit at a time. I'm not even going to use all my water. I'm going to use just a tad bit more, just a little couple drops. Stir that some more. I'm liking the way that's looking. Let's take a look. That's about right. And I didn't even use my whole a one ounce of water. So I've let this grout sit for three or four minutes and it's kind of stiffened up a little bit and I'm going to I'm going to add just maybe a half a teaspoon more water, that's about it, and give it another stir. And now we're ready to grout. i got to tell you this is my favorite part of the mosaicing. I love the grouting. It's kind of like where it's the big reveal. You get to see your mosaic all finished. Now, I like to use these, and I told you, yes, this is part of a pool float, and it's a pool noodle, and it's um, great for spreading your grout around. There's no scientific method. I call this kind of like, what, plop and smush and smooge, and that's all I'm going to do. I'm going to use this little pool noodle to smush everything around. You can use your fingers if you'd like. I don't think there's going to be many um, uh, sharp edges here, but... This gets the job done real well for me. So, smush in, smush all around, and get all these little crevices filled. And don't worry about getting the black grout on top of your letters. It will come off when we clean, so it's not an issue. So I'm going to keep smushing around, probably bored with watching me do this, and I'll come back to you in a minute. So I've smushed pretty much all, all around, I've, I've covered everything in with grout, and I'm pretty aggressive by the way. But what I want to show you is the edges. You want to come in, you might want to move, uh, use your fingers and fill in all these edges with black grout. Now that black grout is going to stain your substrate, which I think is a good thing. That way you don't even have to paint it. Yay! So I want you to use your fingers or your grout, your uh, pool noodle and fill in all these places on, along the side. Can you see what I'm doing here? Yeah. That way it looks pretty on the sides as well. Okay, I've given this um, mosaic and the grout about, I guess, three or four or five minutes. I get kind of anxious. 
And now I'm not taking a wet sponge. I'm just using dry paper towels and kind of rubbing in, rubbing around, rubbing off. I'm sure you noticed when you did your grouting that um, the grout goes a long way. When you use that pool noodle and smush it around, it goes a long way. It goes further than you think. Um, now is the time you may see if you got any glue on top of your mosaic pieces. This will, um, the grout and the, the moisture in the grout will loosen it up. So this is a good time I use like a, a little screwdriver or sometimes any kind of little pokey tool or just your fingernail and it'll scrape off real easily right now. So look at this, it's starting to come to life. I love it, it's so fun. These little tiles here on the outside, these vit glass vitreous tiles, some of them have little, I guess we'd call little bubbles in them. That's kind of part of their character. And you'll see that some of your grout may stick in those little bubbles. It's not an issue to me. I kind of like it. It's kind of part, part and parcel of those glass tiles. It's part of their character. Looking good. So you do have a little sponge, and I do have some water here, and I'm going to use this sponge on the sides especially, just to kind of clean it up and make it look a little, ne look a little uh, neater. Now the back of your mosaic is probably nasty looking, and if you want to, you can clean it off, but you know, I really don't care. Nobody's going to see that. So you can use your sponge there. So looking pretty good so far. So, I've cleaned the back. Doesn't it look nice? I used a wet sponge or a damp sponge and cleaned the back. And I uh, used that damp sponge to clean the edges and make them look a little nicer. This has been sitting here for probably 10 or 15 minutes and I have a dry, old, nasty terry cloth towel. And I'm just going to give it a really good buffing, a really good cleaning, and really make it shine up. Um, once again, be pretty aggressive. Some of these places you may see like on your letters. I had to kind of take a tool here and I have like a, what is this, an hibachi stick or something and clean some of the grout out just a little bit so you can see a little bit better. Here this little heart needs to be sort of unearthed from the grout so you can see that it's really a heart. What else have I got? Anything else need cleaned out? I think we look pretty good. Maybe I might clean this out. The grout is setting up, but it's not dry yet, so you can still do some cleanup. So, once again, real aggressive. Now, your white letters, they will clean up. They're looking kind of nasty right now, but once this grout is totally dry, like tomorrow, you can come back with a damp sponge or spray the letters down and get them 100% cleaned up. I think they look pretty good right now though. I like it. Pretty fun. And I'm going to just continue buffing and when I think we're all done.